welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and today we're rounding decimals. Now there's two kinds of rounding you can do with decimal numbers. You can round to decimal places or you can round to significant figures. Now in practice, significant figures is much more useful than decimal places, particularly if you're doing some kind of science. But decimal places is definitely easier to learn in the first place, so check out this video first where we do decimal places, and then I've done another video for rounding to significant figures, which you should learn after you've learned the decimal places one. So let me go over some concepts first. Uh, imagine you've got a big number line here. I'll just go, we'll stick 50 on that end, and... 60 on that end. And we're going to pick a number in the middle, and let's go with 57, which is around there. And the question is, 57, if we were to round that to the nearest 10, is it closer to 50 or is it closer to 60? Well, obviously you can see from the picture, in this case, 57 is closer to 60 than it is to 50. So if we were to round that number to the nearest 10, it would round up to 60. And that's essentially what rounding is, that's the concept. I'm going to make it a little bit harder now. Uh, and one of the ways in which I'm going to do that is I'm going to make the numbers bigger. So we'll make that 500 and 600. We'll get rid of that one. And I'll pick some number in the middle. Let's have 548. So the question is, which way would that round? If you were to round to the nearest 100 this time, so it's between 500 and 600, but is it closer to 500 or is it closer to 600? Now, most of you can probably see that 548 is closer to 500. The key giveaway here is if you think about the halfway point, we say we've got a halfway hit point of 550 there, 548 is less than the halfway point, it's less than 550. So you know it's going to round down to 500. Again, if we had another number like 521, for example, well, it's less than 550, less than the halfway point, therefore it must be closer to 500. I mean, you can see from the picture, it's much closer here. So again, that one would round to 500. Let's have something a bit bigger. If we had 562, for example, well, now you can see this one is bigger than the halfway point, it's bigger than 550, so that one would round up to 600. To the nearest 100, 562 is closer to 600 than it is to 500. Uh, let's just have one more, 584. Again, you can see it's bigger than the halfway point, so it's going to round up to 600. So that's, again, the basic concept. But there's something I want to point out here. The way that you can tell which way a number is going to round without having to draw a number line and work out which one it's closest to is... In this case, we're rounding to the nearest 100, yeah? Is it closer to 500 or is it closer to 600? And the columns here, remember that's your units column, your tens column, your hundreds column. So this is the point where we're rounding. We're rounding to the nearest 100. And all you have to do is look at the next digit. Rounding to the nearest 100, you look at the next digit. And you can see that if it's less than 5, so if the next digit is a 4 or a 2, or anything less than 5, you're going to end up on this side of the halfway point. You're going to end up closer to 500 than you are to 600 because you're less than 550. So anything less than a 5, then it's going to go down. Anything more than a 5, though, if it's 562 or 584, when the next digit is more than 5, then it's going to round up. What about if it's actually a 5? If I pick another number in the middle here, pull that up to there, if we have 554, which way is that going to round? Because the number, the next digit, is a 5. Well, you can look at the picture and see it's still more than the halfway point. Anything in the 50s here, whether it's 51, 52, 53, 54, it's still going to be bigger than 550. So actually, 5 or more, and those are all going to round up to 600. What about exactly in the middle? If you had 550, which way would that round? Is it closer to 500 or 600? Well, it's not really closer to either of them. It's the same distance from both of them. So in one sense, it doesn't really matter whether you round it to 500 or to 600. However, in another very important sense, it does matter which way to go. It's fine for us to go down or to go up, as long as everyone goes the same way. 
You can't have some people rounding down and other people rounding up. It's a bit like driving a car. It doesn't really matter if everyone drives on the right hand side or you drive on the left hand side. As long as everyone drives on the same side, then it all works out. If you have people just picking whichever side they want to drive on, that's when people start to crash. So in this case, we have to decide, do we round down or do we round up? And we have to make sure everyone does the same thing. So mathematicians long ago decided that we should all round up. And so whenever you have a number that's exactly in the middle, and the five again is the giveaway here, you still go up. So it kind of groups with all these numbers here. So five or more, and you round up, less than five, four, three, two, one, and that's going to round down. And that's your rule for rounding. Essentially, it's just to decide which one it's closest to. But five or more, and it will be closer to 600. Less than five, it's closer to 500. So five or more, we go up. Less than five, we go down. So let me do a couple of more practical examples now. Let's say we had to round the number uh, 27.462. Now, I've got some decimal numbers here now, finally. You might be wondering, this is rounding decimals, why we don't have any decimals here? Well, if you remember from the um, overview of the decimals, I did a video, I think, called Decimals, What Are They?, which explains a lot of the concepts here. The way you count with decimals is exactly the same as the way you count with normal numbers. So the way that you round with decimals is exactly the same as the way you round with normal numbers. So if you get the concept with normal numbers, rounding with decimal numbers is exactly the same. Now, there's a couple of definitions you need to be aware of here. We talk about these things called decimal places. Well, the decimal point obviously is here. The digits after the decimal point are known as the decimal places. So the first digit after the decimal point is the first decimal place. The second one is the second decimal place, third decimal place, etc. So if you wanted to round a decimal number, you usually talk about rounding to one decimal place or two decimal places. So if we're going to round to one decimal place, well, that's the first decimal place. Uh, let me do a quick number line here. This number is going to be somewhere between 27.4 at the lower end and 27.5 at the upper end. Yeah, because it's 27.4 something, it's got to be bigger than 27.4 because there's something adds to it, but it's not quite as big as 27.5. If you do struggle with some of the concepts here, again, that decimals, what are they video, we'll go over the the different place values of all these things and help you get that in your head because you do really need to understand that before you can get what's going on here. All right, so which one is this closest to? Is it closer to 27.4 or is it closer to 27.5? Well, we're rounding to one decimal place, so the giveaway is the next digit. And I actually recommend you stick a line after the first decimal place, after the point where you round, and then you look at the next digit. In this case, it's a six and five or more, remember, five or more, is going to round up. So because this is five or more, this number will round up to 27.5. It has to be closer to 27.5. So if you to round this number to one decimal place, usually the way you write it is, if you start, if I write it out again, with 27.462 to one decimal place, that will be, put your line, look at the next one, it's going to be 27.5 because it's five or more, that makes the four go up to a five. This number rounds up to 27.5. And it's good practice in brackets afterwards to say how many decimal places you've rounded to. In this case, we've rounded to one DP. That's one decimal place. So that will be the answer if you've been asked to round it to one decimal place. Let me do another one. So we'll have 3.64. And again, I'm going to round to one decimal place. So I want to know one decimal place is here. It's either going to go down to 3.6 at one end of the line or up to 3.7. This number sits somewhere between 3.6 and 3.7. So you look at the next digit. This time it's less than 5. So less than 5, it's going to round down. This one's going to go down to 3.6. So again, if you were to write it out, if you've got 3.64 and you've been asked to round this to one decimal place, put your line after the first decimal place, look at the next digit. Five or more and it would go up, less than five though, and it goes down, down to 3.6. So you write 3.6 and then in brackets, specify the number of decimal places you've rounded to. And that would be your answer. Now one very important thing to point out here. 
This was less than 5, so you rounded down, but notice the 6 hasn't gone down to a 5. It's rounded down in the sense that this number is closer to 3.6 than it is to 3.7. But the digit here has actually stayed the same. So a lot of people, when they're remembering this, remember the rule like this. You put your line after the first decimal place, because we're rounding to one decimal place. You look at the next digit. If it's 5 or more, this number goes up. If it's less than 5, like this one, then this number actually stays the same. Because you're throwing away then the things after the line, it has gone down in that sense and that you've ended up with a smaller number. But in terms of the actual digit, the digit, the 6 here, stays the same. So 5 or more and the digit goes up, less than 5 and it stays the same. A couple of other things to point out then. Firstly, wherever you put your line, after you've looked at the next digit, you always throw away everything after the line. You never write it down. So don't be tempted to try and fill up everything with like the two. All those things just get thrown away. Don't write anything else in that space. The, this one tells you what happens to this one, and then you throw away everything after the line. The second thing to point out is, however many decimal places you've said you've rounded to, in this case, one decimal place, you must have that many decimal places in your answer. If you said you've rounded to one decimal place, and you've got two decimal places here, something's gone wrong. If you've said you've rounded to three decimal places, and you've only got one decimal place, something's gone wrong. So it's, again, good practice to write this here, because then you can check. I said I was rounding to one decimal place. Have I actually got one decimal place? Yes, I have. Great. So that's a good sign I've got it right. Okay, I'm now going to plow through a few more examples, because often the best way to learn this is just to see it done in practice. So, just give me a minute to rub off the board. Okay, so we'll start with 0.376, and I want to round this one to two decimal places. So that's my first decimal place, that's my second decimal place, so I put my line there, and I look at the next one. It's five or more, which means this one is going to go up. So to two decimal places, it's going to be 0.38. Nothing else here changes, it's only this digit that gets affected. So five or more, and it goes up. The seven went up to an eight. Write how many decimal places you've rounded to. In this case, I've rounded to two decimal places. Have I got two decimal places? Yes, I have. So that's a good sign I got it right. Let's try another one. We'll do 5.6297. And this time I'm gonna round it to three decimal places. So count, one, two, three. Put your line there. Look at the next one. It's five or more again. So this one goes up. Oh, but it's a nine. I can't make it into a ten. So what happens here? Well, if you remember from the decimals what are they video, when you're counting with decimals, when you have to add one onto a nine, it rolls over to a zero, and then you add one onto the next column. And it's exactly the same here. So if a nine has to go up, yeah, five or more here means this goes up by one. So if that goes up, it rolls over to a zero, and then you add one onto the next column. Nothing else will change, but because the nine rolls over, the two is gonna become a three. So it's actually gonna be 5.63, and the nine rolled over to a zero. Now again, be careful here. A lot of people miss out this zero. You must put it there. We're rounding to three decimal places, remember. One, two, three. You should say that after you've written it here. Three decimal places. And have you got three decimal places? One, two, three, yes I have. If I don't write the zero in there, I've only got two decimal places, and it's wrong. I know it looks like 5.630 is the same as 5.63. And in one sense, they are the same, but in another sense, leaving the zero here explains to people that you've rounded this to three decimal places. And that does make a difference in practice. If you only put the two there, it's not as accurate. You've only rounded to two decimal places. Putting the zero here says that the numbers here were such that we ended up with a zero. If you don't put it there, they'll think the rounding wasn't as accurate. So you must put a zero there, even though it doesn't seem to do anything in one sense. So one, two, three decimal places, three decimal places. Always check that they're the same. All right, so let's try another one. 426.995. I'm going to go back to two decimal places for this one. So, one decimal place, two decimal places, 
line goes there, you look at the next one, five or more, yes, so this is going to go up. It's a nine again, so the nine rolls over to a zero. And then you add one onto the next column, but that's a, uh, that's a nine as well, which means that's also going to roll over to a zero. And so because this is rolled over, you have to add one onto the next column as well. Now that's a six, so that's going to go up to a seven. There are no more nines rolling over, so don't be tempted to mess with anything else here. You don't keep rolling over all the way. Only if a nine rolls over, do you add one onto the next column. So we're going to get 427.00. This nine went up to a zero, and because it rolled over, you added one onto this nine, which became a zero. And so you added one onto the six, which becomes a seven. No more nines rolling over, you don't change anything else. The four and the two are still four and the two here. I'm supposed to be rounding to two decimal places. You can see my line, one, two decimal places. Say that after you've finished, two decimal places. Check that you've actually got two decimal places when you said you rounded to two decimal places. Even if they're zeros, that's fine. You must leave them there. Okay, last example then. 3.9998. You can probably see what I'm going to do here. We're going to have a lot of rolling over. Let's round to three decimal places. So one decimal place, two decimal place, three decimal places, your line goes there, look at the next one, five or more, so this goes up. Now it's a nine, so it rolls over, that's going to become a zero, which add one, adds one onto that column, so that nine's going to roll over, which adds one onto that column, so that nine's going to roll over, which adds one onto that column, the three becomes a four, no more rolling over, nothing else to do. So finally, the three rolled over, sorry, the three went up to a four, and all these nines rolled over to zeros. It's one, two, three decimal places before the line. We've rounded to three decimal places. Check that you do have three decimal places, even if they're zeros. This often catches people out, because you said you've rounded to three decimal places. Make sure you've got three decimal places, and that's your final answer. So that's rounding to decimal places. Don't get caught out with the nines, but essentially your rule is, Put your line after two decimal places, three decimal places, wherever. Look at the next digit. If it's five or more, this one goes up. Less than five and it will stay the same. The digit stays the same. Okay, my name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.